up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 262 for the week of November 20th, 2022, and the title of this week's episode is Argyle, more like versatile trash pile. Am I right? Yeah, that was a rhyme. You like that shit? Wonderful. Thank you so much. My name is Josh, a.k.a. JK Fire. This week, I'm joined by the man in the GT Halo jersey, Will, a.k.a. I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing on this Tuesday evening? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I am doing well. Uh, apologize for the delay in the show uh, to today. And it's actually funny because um, it was delayed for a different reason entirely. But last night when we were going to record the show normally, my internet went out. And uh, so it was like, literally, we couldn't have done the show anyway, because the internet went out. So that was awesome. And uh, thank God we're not hopefully dealing with that shit today. But only time will tell. You know what I mean? It's Comcast. So anything could happen. Um, If you're tuning in live, welcome Carnig. Uh, welcome Burpo Bane, Rainwater, and Fox Too Quick. Good to see you guys. Hope you're having a great night. And uh, Will, I imagine this week it's going to be a little bit of a of a quicker show i guess you could say yeah um but that's okay do you want to know what's on this week's episode of the show yeah what do we got argyle returns to matchmaking with uh, mixed results that's basically all we're going to be discussing so without further ado uh, further ado let's get into some competitive news argyle returns probably for worse this is by halo support the multiplayer map Argyle has returned to various matchmaking playlists. If you're currently playing, close and relaunch Halo Infinite to update your playlists. If you haven't already done that, I wouldn't, I fucking, I don't know what you're doing. Um, Mar, welcome back. It's good to see you as well. And then Spartan put out a tweet and said, eSports ready with a fucking like rock on emoji. But obviously more to that tweet. But the reason why I didn't include that other part is because Outcast uh, had it laid out as well. So, for those who don't know, Argyle is going to be introduced into the competitive pool for season two of the HCS. Whenever that, when that officially kicks off uh, shortly here, uh, because the, the, the first preseason event is the Optic Invitational, which takes place in just a couple weeks, and uh, we still don't have any information on it. So, yay! That's besides the point. So, Swole Daddy. Oh, boy. I've... I love how you just come. I, you know what? Dead ass. I'm going to be, I'm going to derail for a hot second here. So small daddy. I remember the question you asked last week and I was thinking to myself, I'm not joking right now. I'm thinking about, I was thinking to myself for a good, probably half to three fourths of the week leading up to this show. I wonder if you're going to come back and say another and ask another random fucking question. And because if you are, then I already had it in the back of my head that, we're going to save the question to the end of the show, and then we'll address the question at the end of the show. See what I'm doing there? I kept it in the back of my head. Swole Daddy. Um, welcome back, by the way. And Malum, welcome back. Says, happy Tuesday. To be uh, frank, if you're flexing muscles, you're technically burning calories. That's a true statement as well. But we'll get to the question later on. Um, let's talk about Argyle. More like versatile trash pile. So... Again, for those who don't know, Argyle is going to be introduced into the HCS pool of maps. Uh, from what from what everyone's been told, that's going to be the case. Nothing's changed. And uh, that'll be in the season two of the HCS, which will be starting shortly. Okay? Now, there's been a lot of talk um, from the pro, com from the competitive community online regarding Argyle. Now, I will preface what I'm about to say with the following. A, I have not played on Argyle yet because I haven't played matchmaking since it's been reintroduced. Like, we did customs during the community play date, but I haven't played matchmaking since it's been reintroduced. Will, on the other hand, has played some Argyle. It sounds like some folks in the chat have played some Argyle. So I'll let you guys discuss your thoughts on Argyle. But first, this is what we got from Outcast. On Twitter. So currently, this is what Argyle has in terms of sandbox within the map. Camo, two BR spawns, 
two bulldog spawns, two sniper spawns, two pulse carbine spawns, four commando spawns, two needler spawns, two disruptor spawns, two grapple shot, one repulsor, and the hotly debated two fusion coils. To put things into perspective, now obviously Halo Infinite has a larger sandbox, I guess you could say. For competitive, I would say yes. Yes, for competitive, yes. Because to put things into perspective here, this is what Truth has. Truth being the Halo 5 remake of Midship, basically. This is what Truth has, okay, on Halo 5. Now, this is post-updates, okay? This is post-updates. Because it wasn't always like this. But if you go and play Truth HCS right now in Halo 5, this is what you will see on the map. Camo, plasma pistol, tactical magnum. Camo, plasma pistol, tactical magnum. Three versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Other complaints that have come out about Argyle is that it's too big. It's too big to be a competitive 4v4 map. So, again, I personally have not played it in matchmaking, nor at a top level, right? I went in, when it was first released with the winter update, I went into a, in an academy match and just played around, okay, right? Yeah. But So I, I, I've seen the map, but, like, I haven't played a matchmaking game. Will, before you go... um. I just want to catch up and see what chat has said about Argyle as of late. Sure. So, uh, Peanut Mutt, welcome back, says, It's an absolute cluster. I don't mind Argy Argyle casually, but for the pros, I don't see it working at all. Um, Corey says, Argyle is too big. That's my two cents. I had a game that went into uh, OT without a single flag cap. Oof. Uh, Peanut says, with the Commando and Pulse Carbine spawning so close to one another after the buffs, it feels way too easy to get them. And then Rain actually asked a question that we had talked about before recording the show. He asked, like, why are there even two BRs on the wall? Will, do you want to say what we said I mean, for that? <clears throat> what I, so my experience is I, I kind of stayed back as our sniper when I played that map. And there was times I ran out of snipe ammo when I was able to grab a BR or, you know, be able to grab a pulse carbine and a BR and be set up after that, whatever it may be. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, and then uh, I added that maybe it's just from an ammo perspective. Like, yes, you spawn with BRs in competitive, but what if you run out of ammo in that BR? I I, I mean, relatively speaking, it, we don't with, see that happen very often. No, with but, the size of the map, though, if you want to sit back and just pick at people, that ammo could be nice. You could very well do that. You could very well do that. Um, Peanut says, I don't mind the size if you keep all the weapons. If you remove G8 weapons and the map is the same size, it's probably it'll probably go very slow. And that's that's what that's one of the things that Spartan was talking about too, is that it feels like a BTB map, or may, maybe not necessarily in so this is my opinion, maybe not necessarily a BTB map. But remember, Will, when you made the comment, what if it's like launch site? Yeah. So launch site is also Big, but not big enough to be like a BTB map. It feels like it could be like a 6v6 exactly. map. Exactly. And that's exactly when I ran around Argyle, that's what Argyle felt like too. It could be a 6v6 map. So they're... Uh, so I'll just say, when I played on it, yes. it was a CTF game. Uh, we won two to nothing. Mm -hmm. And what I was able to do is, you know, sniper spawns on the left side of your base. Yeah. And I would hop up in that little window at, or drop down and watch that lane. And my team would push that left lane and okay. I would keep people at bay on the right. Okay. And that strategy seemed to work, but still it was two Oh yeah. It was only two Oh, um, definitely. Oh yeah, God. it was. Um, and honestly the play, I'm going to toot my own horn here. Hold on one second. Lottie. Thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Love you. Thank you, thank you. Um, 
Go ahead. No, the play that got us the first flag cap and really people moving mm -hmm. is I had sniped a couple people. We got a couple dead, and I pushed up all the way to their base on that lane with the sniper. And as they were coming back from the other side to try to stop the flag pull, I was able to get snipe shots and, you know, even just body shots to get the damage down, keep them from pushing us to get that flag cap. And then I had to run all the way back to the other side to support because what do people do? They overextend to try to stop that flag cap. Yeah. So it was very, while it felt slow, once th things started moving, it kind of had to be a little chaotic. Okay. Which, again, at a pro level, might not be a good thing. My worry about it is... One of my biggest complaints, um, well, Lottie says, love this first time I've been in. The setup is sick. Hopefully I haven't missed too much tonight. Nah, Lottie, you're good. Also, thank you so much for tuning in. Love your guys' show too, obviously. Um, I here's my, here's my worry about Argyle. It's the same issue that I had with Bizarre CTF, and look where that is now. Not in the rotation anymore. Yeah. All these fucking times where we have... CTF going to five caps. And when do we ever get to five caps on a map? I mean, you... how many times have we seen OT in Catalyst CTF? Oh, yeah. How many times have we seen OT in Bizarre CTF? It was a t every time almost. It felt like. It almost every it time. Like. Um, Aquarius is the only one where we usually get to five. Exactly, because you have clear defined sight lines and the map is not as long as Argyle. So do you think a chain should be three caps instead of five. Absolutely. Well, that's the first thing, but that's not even from a map standpoint. The The right. problem that I have with Argyle or I a presume problem that I have with Argyle is it's too, it is too big. The reason why I say that is because some of the comments that I've been seeing on some, uh, on some tweets and whatnot is that you, you can, might not even be able to get two rounds of slays and be able to bring a flag back. Because of how big it is. And I'm like, now the, the other kind of way could be, well, that just adds more skill because you have to take more time to make sure you have an established setup before you're able to get a flag across. But if you're having stalemate after stalemate after stalemate, like I can see it happening, especially at a pro level. Oh man, I, this, it's giving me, it's giving me bizarre vibes again. And I'm not excited about that. So from a, <clears throat> from a player point of view, mm -hmm. it's frustrating to go through those motions of a game, yep. right? Getting rounds of slays, not being able to move a flag. Yep. Um, from a spectator view, it could be interesting to watch, right? These teams are battling it out for these slays. It takes a lot to get a flag moving. It really shows the skill. And, and with how big it is, how many options there are on the map, you're going to see pros with weapons doing things we probably wouldn't expect mm -hmm. could be interesting, but for them, it's, it's just going to be annoying not being able to move a flag on a map. Right. So let's, again, I want to put some things in perspective here is also snag. Welcome back. Good to see you, bud. Here's yes. There's two grapples on it. Carnig. Um, also good luck on your paper. Here's, here's my problem is that now we are a competitive show, right? A lot of people that tune in, a lot of people that listen are mainly from the competitive side of things, right? So they understand. So I'm, I'm not going to directly talk to the, to the competitive folks that listen to the show. I want to talk to the potential casual folks that listen to the show. And we have a very respectful community here. So this is why I want to just talk directly to you guys, because I know you guys aren't the one flaming people on Twitter. Here's where, where a lot of the confusion happens between the casual and competitive side, right? Compe uh, Pro goes on Twitter. Let's use Tyler as an example here for better or worse. Spartan goes on Twitter and for better or worse complains about the amount of items, the amount of weapons, the amount of equipment that's on Argyle, right? Casual person goes into his replies is being an asshole. And it's like, Oh, just get good. Utilize the sandbox. Otherwise it's just fucking BRs and it's boring. That's not the point, Right. From a casual perspective, and I don't mean casual in a negative connotation, but from a casual perspective, from a casual play style, being able to utilize those sandbox items can be awesome, right? Because you can utilize so many different things. You can have different types of play styles, so on and so forth. That can be great for you. From a professional standpoint, you are playing with and against some of the greatest players in the world, which means... They all 
know how to use those weapons to the best of their ability, to the best of the weapon's ability, not the person's ability, but the best of that weapon's ability. And with that commando buff, that plasma pistol buff, from a casual standpoint, you may be going into standard matchmaking and be like, oh, this feels fucking great. I'm so glad they did this, right? Hell, even the BR change of a little bit of a nerf to make that last headshot a little bit more difficult to hit. It's a good change overall. It adds to the skill gap. But from a competitive standpoint, not the BR, I'm talking about commando and plasma pistol now and pulse carbine for that matter. From a competitive standpoint, when the pros are using those weapons at the top level in the world, it becomes com- incredibly unbalanced. And if you have four commandos, if you have four commandos on Argyle alone, now with this buff, you're, it's going to be laser beams, guys, across the map. It's going to be absolute fucking laser beams across the map. And again, leading into my worry with Argyle CTF is that we're going to have so many stalemates. And that's that's what I I just I'm I'm just worried about it. Uh, Lottie says there's a lot of worry, weapon numbers, but also locations. I'm also nervous about the floating island too. Fighting for the power port gives me the weird vibes uh, Catalyst does in the bottom mid bridge uh, uh, overshield pickup. I think it's uneven for both pro and casual because it just creates carnage for both sides. Can definitely see that. And I guess from an Argyle perspective, I kind of, I will say this might be an actual, like, now again, I haven't played on it yet. Okay. And you, you can, you can, you can talk more to this. Okay. When I look at Argyle and I see camo on that top platform, right? Yeah. Yeah. And really the only couple ways to get there is if you go up the sides and work your way up or you grapple up there. Correct? Correct. I actually kind of like that because you only have a certain amount of ways you can get to it. Unlike a live fire where like it's just sitting on a platform and you can go from any angle and get to it. You know what I mean? Sure. Argyle requires a little bit more skill to get to camo and then uh, opposite of catalyst where it's just sitting on the bridge bottom. Yes, it is a chokehold point, but, uh, there's, I think there's more ways for like skillful plays to happen with Argyle camo than catalyst overshield. The thing that I liked. So in my game that I played on it, um, like I said, I was sitting back with the sniper. The other team actually had great. They had to communicate. I, I checked. There was, it was, a. My, my team was a team of solos mm-hmm. against a duo and then two solos. But the duo was smart. They'd have someone go up the side, wait, because I was watching it with Sniper. Yep. And the guy in the back of the base would peek me, de-scope me, and then the guy would jump across for the camo. And I'm like, that sucks for me, but wow. Like, they they smart actually play. Made, they made a play. Yeah, smart play. Um, but yeah, the, the choke points are these tight alleyways to go up to that platform. Yes. And... Nade City. Nade City or... If a team can just hold it down and you can't get get up there because of the amount of weapons or whatever is on the field, um, but that's part of it's part of the game, right? You got to contest those areas, right? And that's that's my worry with the four commandos on the map too. Is sure. that if you have a team, let's just say one team has two of them, right? If you're just hard looking at that area, you can fu- you can just straight up beam somebody that goes for it, you know. But I, it's the risk reward. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that if from a professional standpoint, not a, not a casual standpoint, but from a, from a competitive, from a professional gameplay standpoint, they're able to utilize the commando now so fucking well that it, it's literally like, it's like DMR with no bloom. That, that's, it's a laser beam. I see these Spartan clips online. They're literally a fucking laser beam. They're great with them. They are. And that's, it detracts from the skill gap at the highest level. And that's, that's why I'm trying to reach out to the more casual audience that may not understand when a, when a pro player goes online and for all intents and purposes complains about the state of what a map is, what options are on said map, the buffs that are coming out for weapons, blah, 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 blah. It's because they're playing at the top level. They're not, they don't want to take anything away 
And we, we talk about the professional space. We are not professional players. We talk about it. But they don't want to take anything away from what you are experiencing. They don't. None of the professional players want to take anything away from what you are experiencing within casual matchmaking. Nothing. They just want to cater the experience that they are playing at the top level in the world. So that brings up the conversation then. And love Tashi, but he said he we thinks that HCS shouldn't control what's on the maps, right, and what they're playing. But if you give the pros what they want and they're able to cater that outside of what's currently in the game, they have their experience. Exactly. That, that shows the highest competitive side. Hence why... Last week when I was talking about part of me really wants them to go back to having a dedicated HCS playlist in the game. And then the other part of me understands from a business standpoint why 343 doesn't want to do that. They already complain about population as it is. If you're segregating a population even further by taking ranked and HCS and separating them, I get it. But that's... They're... I'll just say it. There really should be an HCS playlist. All right. I'm going to go on this, this tangent, tangent too. I guess call it a tangent. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing Halo has always had is the split communities, right? Yes. You have your casual, not in a bad sense again. Yep. Like you said, and competitive. Mm -hmm. And we want HCS to grow. We want it to be the biggest thing ever, right? Of course. Um, Something infinite has is they may be trying to do is pull the casual community into the competitive community. There's a big avenue for that. It's right there. So when you have maps like Argyle, it's giving casuals more sight lines into competitive and maybe that's oh something they would want to play. They get into competitive, they play the rank playlist, they see the pros, brings them into HCS. Right. So I totally understand that. It's just tough that that then dictates how the competitive side plays. Yes. It is a and it it is a very hard line to follow. Not a thin line, just a very hard line to follow. The okay, we have an HCS division that doesn't necessarily dictate how things are developed because they don't. That's not their job. You have a competitive insights team, right, who tries to lean things more towards the competitive side. And then you have the pro players who are introducing their feedback as well and for what they want for their specific thing. It's a very hard line to follow to be like, what do we give them? What do we not give them when you don't have a dedicated HCS playlist? Um, Catching up on chat here real quick. Uh, Peanut says, um, I'm high diamond, low onyx, and even uh, there it's pretty unbalanced right now. I think a huge issue that I see is from the plasma tracking and effectiveness. I don't mind the commando as much, but I'm not playing at the highest level. Okay. Um, Lottie says, 100% agreed. Uh, it definitely is different. That's where the numbers of items being an issue comes into play. Repulsor bottom mid and the grapple being close proximity, and then you have both bases with clearish lines of sight, and you have so much to play with. It could become a different type of chokehold. It's rough, I'm worried. Agreed with you 100%. Uh, fiendish thank you for the follow greatly appreciated snag says only got to play it once it was very overwhelming once everyone got commandos and snipe it was an immediate stalemate and again we're it, again we're not even talking at the highest level right now yeah and now granted the other thing could be said well well if both teams no it, it would still be a stalemate it'd still be a fucking stalemate um Jurdius, welcome says another thing to consider is how cracked these weapons will feel on land Another really That's, good point. Yes. Didn't even think about that. Um, now, Swole Daddy brings up a good point, too. And this is something that we did talk about either last week or the week before. I'm, I'm forgetting. But he says, but why not leverage all the free content that the community is making? 343 can focus on an HCS-specific playlist and just open the popular custom maps to casuals. So, in a Q&A about Forge releasing, there was a question posed uh, will custom maps be introduced into the HCS? And they said something along the lines of, we'd like to, it's going to take time. Snag asks, didn't Envoy make a map? Yes, and it's in the community creations, by the way, of this week's episode of the show, exclamation point, show notes in chat. Um, and 
he asks, uh, Swole Daddy says, it literally feels like that easy, doesn't it? It always feels like it's that easy, but it's never actually that easy. So while I agree with you to an extent that like, I would love to have the, what these uh, community members are making in Forge to be more accessible within playlists. And that's going to be coming down the line eventually. Things take time. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, HCS opens no custom stage. Yes. They create HCS maps and opening up customs to casual play. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. Um, Peanut says, although sometimes hearing all the negativity from the pros can be a bit much, it's usually for the best. And it helps bring attention to weapons that definitely need tweaked, uh, sword trades. And thank fucking God that's coming. Whole, right? <laughs> Holy hell. He also says, I wish they'd bring in a retired player or two on contract when maps are being made to add competitive insights. And that just makes me wonder, like, what, the, and this isn't to throw shade or anything because I bet they all do great work, but, like, I just wonder what, role did the competitive insights team actually have now? You know what I mean? And then, uh, also this isn't, this isn't meant to throw shade at the individual that works at three, four, three. But the one thing I will say is that remember when FFA had King of the Hill and I mean, ranked FFA had King of the Hill or objective in general, the dev that did it, uh, had tweeted out and said that and again, I'm not naming names or anything like that. I just found this really concerning to me personally, because I don't think it should ever have been in the playlist, but the, the individual said, yeah, it was the only one I was able to get past the competitive insights team. I'm like the fact you even tried the fact you even tried, like, don't even fucking try. Um, Lottie says they have a pro team. It's made up entirely of retired pros, just FYI, but the pro team give feedback and whether anything is done with that feedback is in different hands. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate it. Um, Legend says one way my team broke the standoff was getting camel and running flag bottom mid to score. Okay. So there's an option. Miss the miss the days of Farouk Briggs. Welcome back, by the way. By the way, yeah, it's time to lock it up. I fucking miss Farouk so bad, man. Oh, I miss Championship Sundays. He come out on the MLG stage. Oh, I miss it. Beth, welcome back. Says, yeah, that irked me too. Like he was uh, bound and determined to squeeze something in that shouldn't have been, and finally worked them down to letting them put that in. Beth is commenting on the King of the Hill and ranked FFA statement that I made because she is an FFA fiend. And uh, yeah, Beth, as soon as I saw that tweet come out, I'm like, oh, this is so unfortunate. Why are we forcing these things in when they don't need to be forced in? I'm all for experimentation. Experimentation's great, especially in, in any title. Experimentation can be great. But, oh, man. I just wish there was, you know, they had mentioned pre-release about flighting updates. I just wish that was still a thing so that we could experience this outside of the game, you know, and then figure it out before it's fully in. I wonder, because remember the whole conversation about achieving seasonality? I wonder if post-season three of Infinite, we do have flighted updates then. Because something tells me that, based off of all the changes that they've had both internally and with the game itself and the amount of work that they've had to do to get the game in the state that it's currently in, which yes, a lot of things still need to be worked on, but it is in a, in a better state, all things considered. I think once they reach that um, seasonality approach with the begin with season three, which is supposed to be the start of that, then I think we'll get to the point of flighting updates. That's what I would assume. I just hope it's still on the table. Uh, yes, I, I would hope so as well. What's up shaggy nades. Welcome. Um, oh man. So now, okay, let's, let's cap it off with this, right? Teams may or may not be like some teams may be starting scrims. A lot of teams probably aren't right now. We're still waiting on a lot of things to kick back up. Right. So 
we haven't had a lot of time with the map being in a competitive rotation. A lot of the initial remarks that we've been seeing from the professional base has been negative. Um, and I hate saying this because I wish we'd have an opportunity to not have this be the case, but I feel like we have to wait and see what happens in a tournament first before anything happens. Yeah. Um, we have the, the, the invitational uh-huh. pro series kicking up. Well, so it's really, that's where that map will be shown off and they can figure out what needs to happen to move forward. So here's the question. Will Argyle be in preseason or is it being held for the actual season to start? Another great question. Because um, the preseason is the Optic Invitational. Right. With it being an Optic Invitational, are they able to change the, the map pool, whatever it may be, to, to either have it or not? I would hope so, because it's just in partnership with the HCS. Right. But it's not an actual season event. Right. But it, and it's ran by optics. So they should have control over what's, what's going on to an extent. To an extent. Yeah, yeah. To an extent. I would hope so. Snag says any word on whether that, uh, it'll be in that. Yeah. That's what we're wondering. Snag. We don't know yet. Literally nothing has been said for the optic invitational other than tickets are available now for the optic invitational. Lottie says it should be, I can get more confirmation at some point, but I think the idea is to show off what we have coming for year two. So it makes sense for it to be awesome. Lottie, you're amazing. You are amazing. Um, I'm, uh, I'm concerned. I am concerned. No, you're amazing. Lottie, stop it. But no, I'm genuinely concerned because yeah. we, we haven't had a map this big in the competitive <laughs> rotation. And I like how it's symmetrical. I think that's great, but man, ah, uh, yeah. My, my concern with it too is it does kind of come down to the size because a lot of infinite is weapon control, mm -hmm. you know, power up control, weapon control, even nades. Yeah. And with the map being that size, coordinating pushes, getting control of those weapons, it just feels like it can get, bad quickly. Yep. And again, I've been, I've been preaching it since when infinite released and we, we first got the competitive settings, right? Is that CTF should be three flag caps. Um, maybe except Aquarius Aquarius might be able to stay five, but literally like any other iteration of CTF should be three caps bar not like that's it. We, we never go to total caps. Like it always goes to overtime overtime or just two time. Um, cause once a team gets ahead, they can just slay out. Yeah. And that could be another issue on Argyle is that if you just have weapon control, you just slay, you out. Just slay out the entire time and hold them back the entire time. It can be devastating. Um, Beth actually says it didn't really feel all that big to me, but again, only one game on it. It doesn't feel massive like launch site or behemoth launch site is fucking too big. <laughs> launch site is an awful fucking map too. That's besides the point. You ever think they are going to bring back behemoth? I don't think so at this point. I hope not. I fucking hated that map too. With teams being so coordinated, well, we could very well see huge momentum shifts because one team has the entire sandbox. Every player on one side has a power weapon. Pretty much. Yikes. Agreed. Lottie. hundred yeah. percent. Yep. Even in my game, uh, there was three snipers on the map and I was okay with it. Cause my team had two, but <laughs> If, if that happens where those standoffs and weapons keep spawning. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Mythics is launch site is the bane of my existence. Bane of everybody's existence, my friend. Okay. I'm going to cap it off with this. And this is the thing that scares me the most. Let's say it is finally determined. And I say finally, because who the fuck knows when it's going to be determined. If it's going to be determined that there are simply too many weapons on the map. Okay. Three, four, three makes a decision based off the feedback that they have received from the competitive community. Now, again, this is all ifs. Okay. 
And this is why I'm capping this off with it. This is what I'm scared of. If they hear the feedback loud and clear, if they decide to make changes to Argyle, when do those changes happen? Is it a mid-season update? Is it? Right. Like, yeah, when does that fall into the HCS? Because that also then can then change the entire dynamic on how a map is played, depending upon what's removed, what's tweaked, whatever it may be. Now, the counter to this is, well, pros could always just GA stuff until they're happy with where they are, you know? And we could very, we could very, very well see a commando GA um, before the real season kicks off. Okay, we very well could see that. That's what things are looking like. I, I'm not confirming nor denying. It's just what you know what you see online. Um, and then you know you hear talks about plasma pistol, um, with the added tracking on that. Is that going to be GA'd as well? And GA is a whole other topic we already discussed earlier. But like. We want pros to play the way that the pros want to play. We want it to be the most competitive possible. We want it to be balanced. And from what Argyle has on the map right now, it doesn't seem like it's that. So I'm just worried because I, I love the idea of adding new maps into competitive. I love that idea. When, when catalyst was introduced, people have a lot of reservations about catalyst. I understand that I can respect that, but I love adding fresh experiences into the competitive format. It keeps players on their toes. It keeps them having to adapt on new maps. I love that. And then from a, from a spectator standpoint, things aren't getting stale either. And this is coming from somebody who loved watching the standard rotation in three. Yeah. Reach whatever, like two, uh, uh, anything, right? Like, I like the standard rotation of maps that we have, but I also love the idea of adding more. So, and we got rid of Bizarre CTF because of it, so I'm all for that shit. Ah, oh. Lottie says, GAs are probably going to happen, but it just sucks, doesn't it? GAs are never good and are terrible for the health of, comp- of competition, but sometimes it's needed. Bet, I mean, uh, Lottie, at least, at least you said it. <laughs> at least you said it. Because... For all intents and purposes, you're right. GAs don't necessarily help, especially um, for a player coming in like Will, you were talking about earlier, a player coming in for the first time, right? And seeing the competitive scene, seeing a competition, seeing a tournament for the first time. And then you see people asking questions in chat, like these new people coming in. Why aren't they picking up this gun? Why aren't they using that? Energy Sword's been there the whole time. Why aren't they picking that? That's a power weapon. They should be using that. Well, let's tell you why, right? And they're like, well, that's boring. I can see that. Um, no one should have to Google GA for their viewing experience. Peanut, you're 100% correct. So it, it's just, it just sucks. Uh, Swole says, also remember the pit will be added to competitive in a month or so. That helps with map variety. 100% agreed. And uh, aesthetic aside, I am excited for the pit to come back. I do love the pit from Halo 3. Um, I did, I did. Oh my God, guys. I can't believe I actually like the one in Halo 4. I know, fucking kill me. Um, But no, I'm excited for it to come back. And it's Taco Bell aesthetic. I think it's going to be great. So. What snag? What? I'm, I'm confused right now. So yeah. All I'm going to say is to cap this off. Thank you guys for keeping the conversation civil. Greatly appreciated. That's what you guys always do. But again, I want to thank you guys because you know, the internet is the internet and uh, can be, you know, but no, you guys are great. Uh, Zap Dane. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. So I guess to, to, in the words of our show, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. How things are actually played. In a competitive landscape with Argyle, but, uh, oh man. Lottie says, are you guys weekly? I need more of this. Oh yeah, we are. Hell yeah. (laughs) 262 weeks in baby. (laughs) Zap says Argyle is fire. Hopefully you mean a dumpster fire. I'm just kidding. Everybody can have their opinion. If you like it, that's perfectly fine as well. 
Just not for CTF. Yeah, CTF is going to be scary. It's going to be scary. All right. Will, the last piece of competitive news here. If you guys want to keep talking about Argyle, feel free to do so within the chat. Um, if you're listening to the audio version of the show or checking out the VOD on YouTube, uh, leave a comment if you'd like to. I don't fucking say this normally, but if you want to keep talking, keep the conversation going, feel free to. Or Will's going to pimp out our Discord at the end of the show as well. Join that. We can talk about it further as well. Elated Dartboard, welcome back. He says, screw it, I'll say it. I like the new pit aesthetic. Hell yeah, you do. Taco Bell, baby. All right. The last piece of competitive news. 13 changes I would make to Halo Infinite multiplayer. This is by Wonder Boy. He put out a little video on the tweet hairs. And this is what he said. These are the 13 things. And uh, these are relatively small things. They're not controversial, and I like them. So here we go. One, add the ability to customize your Spartan during searching for a multiplayer match. Why the fuck is that not in the game? It would be so nice to be like, oh, I need to put on this helmet real quick. Or Or, let me add to this, like a 1A, if you will. Not kicking you out of the search if you hit search and then go into a menu immediately. Oh, yeah. It has that like three second countdown. And you have to stay in the search. It's fucking stupid. Okay. Seriously. Josh is very passionate about that. Wow. I I just, I'm so, it's, it's so stupidly small of a thing that like it would just cause so much less headaches. See, Lottie, yes, that's Lottie, what I'm talking yes. about. I do that all the time. I'm sitting there like, why is my, my where's my match? Oh, right. I'm we're not play, even searching. We're playing together, right? Oh, are we searching? Oh, nope. Oops, my bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that shit. Oh, man. Now that Josh moved to the next topic, I can say to Halo, Halo 3 Pit, least favorite map, and I'm stoked for the Taco Bell version. Hey, Peanut, I can always read chat and go back. <laughs> no comments. Safe, motherfucker. Two, add a match found sound in the event of being alt tabbed out of the game or just simply stepping away from the game. Sure. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, it just lets you know. I think that's awesome. Um, Brett, the Eskimo. Welcome to the live show. And thank you for the follow says we've all been there as party leader. Um, are you going to start it up or what? 1000%. Yeah, oh, yeah. 1000%. I like that idea of the match found sound. I think that's great. Three custom entrance animations. Yeah. You have everybody doing a random one right now. Yeah. Or like, you know, they could dare. I even say, I know I'm going to get a lot of fucking clap back about this, but imagine they're unlockable customization items. Crazy. Four, a custom lobby pose. Like when you're uh, all standing around the pelican? Yeah. 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 Five, select which maps to queue into. Now, Wonder Boy did make mention in his video that this he understands the issue about population, right? But uh, he the point he tries to make is like, what if a new map comes out or what if I'm trying to hone my skills on a specific map and I don't want to queue into the entire pool, right? I want to like emphasize a specific map that I'm in there. So there's that. Um, six, unlock fully rotatable death cam instead of this weird ass third person bullshit that you can't even do anything with. I think it's because they don't want you to gain information that you didn't necessarily earn. You died, you got in that fight with that person, and it follows that person until they're off the screen. I understand where you're coming from. Personally, I would like a fully rotatable one. Just just me personally. That I I like I like that. I like that because I want more information. I want to tell my teammates what the fuck is going on. You can talk about the guy that killed you. You yep. can give them that information. Yep, where he's going. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, show the map on the loading screen. I'm down for that. Absolutely. Um, Pinnable playlists. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I watched this video that Wonder Boy put out, Wonder Boy's amazing, by the way. Let's not get shit twisted. But when he said this point, I kind of laughed inside because I'm like, with the amount of playlists that are in the fucking game, you want to be able to pin some of them to the top? Well, hey, maybe I don't want to scroll all the way to the bottom for rank. Oh, yeah, I want to scroll Boop, boop. Okay, there's ranks. It's not that short now. All, all jokes aside. All jokes aside. Uh, friends list shows full nameplates. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. You really only see them at the start of a game. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Customizable HUD placements. To an extent, sure. 
I, I guess I don't know how I would customize it myself. Yeah. I'm fine yeah. with what it is, but sure. Yeah. Um, an option to surrender, like a mercy rule. You drop two players, it's 4v2. I'll, let's just get out of here. Yep, I like that idea a lot. Um, option to remove the ping from the kill feed. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? I've, yeah, I've had that happen. When someone just spams a ping and yep. just moves the whole kill feed off the screen. And that's exactly the point he was trying to make. Keep the kill feed about the kills. And then finally, CSR leaderboard in game. And that'd be cool. And then uh, I also saw in the chat as well, um, B, uh, Briggs says if pre and post game lobby isn't mentioned in this list, it'll be, I'll be disappointed. Well, you can be disappointed. So there's that. Um, let's see. Zap says veto system is better. Uh, ego child, your girl, Jesus Christ. Welcome back. Says, uh, bring back proximity chat in pre post game lobbies. Yep. So pre post game lobby, that's kind of one of the biggest ones that we see. Time and time again. Who the fuck knows, man? I don't know. Yeah, I think the the mercy rule or being able to surrender would be amazing. Like, if you're already getting fucking grief for kills, you know, and you're right, well, two of your teammates leave, what the fuck is the point of me being there just so I don't lose CSR? Yeah, I mean... At this point, they said the change is coming where if two people leave, the third and fourth only lose five CSR for leaving at that point, not the mm -hmm. full 15. But still, you don't want that. I don't want that mark that I left a match. Like, I'll, like if I can surrender and know I get out okay. Right. Stress, thank you for the follow. Says good points. Yes, Wonder Boy does make great points. Also, good to see you. Love your content. Um... The being able to group up post match would be pretty cool. I've seen that in the chat. That makes sense. Uh, Daddy, Daddy says Halo Reach assassination loves those. That's the thing too. It's like, why not have assassinations in the game, make them customization options, and then just have the toggle to turn them off if you don't fucking want them on. You know. I don't. Uh. There's a lot of like it's weird like, head scratching moments. It's of like, like that, why isn't this a thing? That risk reward too. If you want to have an assassination on and take the time to do it, you might die while trying. Yep. And that, that's why I turn them off. Yeah. I turned them off in Halo 5 because I, I hated the animation taking forever. They looked cool as hell. And they were unlockables. Go fucking figure. Carnage says, all right, I'm here. What I miss? Uh, scroll up. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, um, and Briggs says, bring back dinos. That's a whole other debacle as well. As long as you'd be killed during animation, I don't see why not. It'd be fun as fuck. That's the thing is that they were really cool. And the ones that you get from like rec packs and shit in five were really cool. Like where you stick somebody and fucking whip them around and oh, throw yeah, them. Yeah, that right. Awesome. Really, really cool. But if you don't want to do that, you can turn them off. It's crazy. Oh my God. It's just insane. So yeah, Wonder Boy, great points. Chat, great points as well. You guys are awesome. And that's that. Carnage, it's okay. That's why that's why we fucking we put it out there, you know? So you can catch up on it when you'd like. Um, Stag says in doubt you can disrespect you can disrespect by stabbing with a knife. Uh wait. You were exposed, right? Same thing, risk risk versus reward. Yeah, that's the thing. Risk reward. Um so yeah, it's just it, it's just an added option. You know, they there's so many options for customization that are not being utilized, which is kind of surprising. Right, and they I think they've even mentioned as to why on some of these things, if I'm not mistaken, but for all I know they don't have the idea of bringing dinos back, which is kind of funny, but it's just another way for customization to take place. Look, 343, I'm just trying to make you money. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point of you being a live service game now is that you want to make more money. I'm trying to help you. God. Jesus. All right. That's it for the competitive news. Your upcoming tournaments of the week presented by noob. Oh, wait. Oh shit. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Your upcoming tournaments of the week. Oh, hold on. 
Carnage with a three month resub. You get a woo! It's time for the upcoming Tournaments of the Week presented by NoobCombo.com. Check out <laughs> NoobCombo.com. For all your Halo Esports needs, by none other than Maddie Rums. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Maddie. So, <laughs> yo, Swole Daddy with the fucking Subarino, you get a woo! Thank you very much. Also, can everybody give a big shout out to uh, Legendary C4? Corey, if you're still here in the chat, those are from Corey. He got those and sent them to us. Um, and if you if you checked, if you heard the beginning of the show, we have ones for HCS Pro Talk as well. But um, give a big give a big shout out to Corey. He's amazing, literally amazing C four, and uh, he'll get a shout out later on in the show too. But Corey, God, you're fucking awesome. So your upcoming tournaments of the week: we have daily tournaments, Z League daily tournaments, and First Blood daily tournaments. If those even are fucking still taking place, I don't even know anymore. I haven't man. had the updates. And then Sunday, November twenty seventh, we have the Honda Fan Cup qualify number one. Qualifier number one. Swag. Thank you for the fall. Welcome to the live show. Will, are you ready? Am I switching it back? Yeah. Oh, we're doing this again. Yeah. And that's it for the upcoming service of the week presented by noobcombo.com. Make sure to check out noobcombo.com so for all your Halo Esports needs. All right. <laughs> I can't. Uh. Will, that means it's time for Roster Media. All right. <laughs> All right. Roster Media. One piece of news this week. It's coming from Navi and Wonder Boy signed for another year as coach. So. Talked yes. about Wonder Boy earlier. Here he is again. Yeah, he posts the contract signing gif or something like that. Like everyone does. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to wait till he actually announces it. And then, and then he did. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll put that in the show. Congratulations, Wonder Boy. Um, really, really wishing you guys the best for season two of the HCS. Yes. Really want to see European talent and all international talent for that matter rise up the ranks even further. Um, just excited to see what happens there. Uh, Prime, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. Hey, Corey, it's okay. We're just thanking you. Okay, that's all. We're just thanking <laughs> you. Will, with that, would you mind going through the, the singular tournament recap that we have for the last week? Yes. Um, might butcher some gamer tags, but here we go. It's the Europa Halo Fall Series Finals. Taking fourth was Team Beans on Toast, and this included Squashy, Warlord, Looney, and Haulers. Third went to a team called One Shot, and this included uh, Kaya Deb, Milzy, uh, Master Bows, and Hybrid. Second went to, I'm going to go, Lahazi, Lahazi. Uh, this included New Brainiac, uh, Bastos, Shady, and Tom Merges. And first place went to a team called uh, Do Something. This included Glory GG's Clonely, So Snaky and Mighty. Definitely did something. They did. As in won the fucking tournament. But yeah, that's uh, that's the only one we had this week. Um, obviously, things are just a little slow before the new season starts up. Yep, so. things are going to be kicking up soon. Um, the Honda Cup, is, it's going to be literally starting. Um, season 6 of the Halo Draft... Uh, wait, Jesus Christ, the Halo Rec League. I'm getting things confused. Yeah, season six of the Halo Rec League is going to be starting up as well. Um, and, Will, I'm just going to give you a heads up now. I think we're going to have a little fun next week with Roster Mania, and we're going to do them all again. Get excited. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Lots of teams. Just going to. Um, yeah. <laughs> Will's just going to die in a corner. Uh, yeah. And then, obviously, we'll have the Optic Invitational that's coming up in a couple weeks. Who, who fucking knows what that's going to entail? The fuck? And then um, that the space station 
event is going to be coming uh, shortly after that, and then the major in February to kick off the real season. It's going to be it's going to be a good time. Will, let's get into some regular news. There's a Halo community update and a community corner red nomster by Alex Wakeford. Two articles over on Waypoint. I'm not going to read through them. You can if you'd like to. I'm just going to move on. Xbox Forge screenshot fix by Halo support. Players on Xbox consoles can now add screenshots to their Halo Infinite Forge files. In your Forge file details menu, select edit screenshots under the owner header to add images captured in Halo Infinite. Due to a bug, this feature currently only allows for selecting first from the first page of your Halo Infinite screenshots, so get fucked. A future update will span the selection to all, all Halo Infinite screenshots, so get fucked currently. <laughs> Bot Boot Camp is back, Will! All right. Oh, boy. The Bot Boot Camp multiplayer playlist has returned to Halo Infinite. If you're currently playing, close and relaunch, blah, blah, blah. The Bot Boot Camp playlist pits a team of four real players against four AI bots in various arena game types, and you'll finish the game in less than two minutes flat. And finally, on a serious note, on a very, very serious note, I um, want to say rest in peace to Greg Bear, the author of major science fiction works, including the Halo 400 trilogy of novels and... Um, he passed away over the weekend, um, for those who did not know. Um, and we included a link to Podcast Evolve's interview with him in 2019. So if you wanted to go back and listen to that, they re-released that episode. Um, highly recommend you go do so. It sounded like Greg was an amazing individual. And um, I know the 400 trilogy of novels can be very... Uh, uh, not controversial in a sense, but they are, they are heavy reads, I guess you could say. Um, but they do include a lot of great information about the foreigners, about, uh, Halo's history. Um, so yeah, obviously recommend you go read those or listen to the audiobook versions of those, but, uh, rest in peace to Greg Bear. And that's it for the regular news. Colonel Flom, a welcome says, well, I shit. I never catch the pod live. This is a treat. You're a treat. It's time for Con of the Games to watch! CDO Mosh Pit has been delayed due to a bug. This is by Treyarch Studios. Update, CDO Mosh Pit was initially expected to release at the start of Season 1 multiplayer, but recently discovered issues of the mode will require a slight delay. Addressing these issues are our current top priority, and we'll update you on the timing ASAP. Update, remain hard at work on the issues that have prevented CDO Mosh Pit from going live. We'll continue to update this thread and Trello card as we receive more updates. If we look at the Trello card right now, we can see that it's still being worked on. Before I move on, I want to say this to Treyarch Studios. I know that COD Studios get a lot of shit, okay? A lot of shit. But if there's one thing that I can commend you on, I mean, I can commend you on a lot of things, but if there's an additional thing that I can commend you on is that you have a publicly accessible Trello board. For those who don't recall, MCC did this too. I don't know if it's, I don't think it still does this, but MCC used to have a Trello board as well that was publicly accessible. The thing that I love about this is that you have a high level overview of things that are being actively worked on that directly impacts the game that you are playing. I think that is phenomenal. And while I understand that not every studio can do something like this, I did greatly appreciate it when 343 did do it for MCC. And I would love to see, um, like Rainwater says, I would love to see this happen in Infinite in the future. I think it's a great opportunity to get a bird's eye view of things that are happening within the game that you are actively playing. And I think that it can also help to alleviate some of the tension of the community when they're providing feedback. Now, granted, that might not happen all the time, okay? but at least it provides that additional level of information. Love that idea. And then I'm not going to read through them, but CDL starting rosters have been, uh, they're all fully live. And uh, there's a graphic in the show notes, exclamation point show notes in chat, or check out the description of the video or the audio version of the show for the link. But if you want, you can see all the rosters and there they are. And then I forgot to include it, but some of the rosters or some of the organizations in the Call of Duty League also released um, their pre-orders for the player kits, including like hoodies and jerseys 
And uh, as we've talked about in the Discord server, hey, thieves, the fuck you doing? Did you literally copy paste last year's design and then move the LA logo to the other side of the fucking jersey? Because that's what it looks like. Good Lord. Um, I will say, Rocker, not just saying this because I'm a Minnesota fan, but Rockers actually looks awesome this year. For for those who don't know, they got rid of the dumbass barcode fucking looking thing on the torso. On all the jerseys, all of them. Like, they got rid of the fucking barcode. Well, I can't say all of them. We still have, like, half the teams that need to reveal their shit. But, like, all that have been revealed so far, that barcode thing, gone. Out of here! So, Rockers jersey looks dope. The Mutineers jersey looks dope. Um... The LA Gorillas looks dope. Uh, the the Boston Breach is very minimal, but also doesn't look that bad either. It's just the thieves, you know. What are you doing, man? But that's it for kind of games. Watch, yeah, yes, Zap, Call of Duty, the Call of Duty League. We have a little segment, little segment in the show. Where we talk about the Call of Duty League. It started when. People the, when did it the, start when people jumped from Halo to Call of Duty, and it just stayed ever since. Oh yeah, yeah, because Shotzi moved over, Frosty moved over for a little bit too. So, LAGT Michael Crazy, honestly, I'm Lottie, very very excited for this season. I know a lot of people like I know that Modern Warfare Two is a love or hate experience. Um, at least it's not Vanguard. You know, is that the one everybody hated? Was Vanguard? I think that's the one everybody hated was Vanguard. Either way, at least it's not that, you know? But yeah, I'm very excited for this season. I'm excited to see what happens. What happens with these teams. And Zap, it's okay. Like I said, we have a short segment. We talk about COD because, you know, also competitive scene. Yes, there are previous Halo players that are in it. And hey, we have a team that is being represented in the Minnesota Rockers. So why the fuck not? It's our goddamn show. I do whatever the fuck I want. Which means it's time for Will's Adventures with the Nailovers! And other games too! Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2! Will, what's play this week? Uh, yeah, as discussed before, played some ranked Halo Infinite. Um, solo queuing is great. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Um, oh, played some, oh, played no. some Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Um, leveling guns and finding out I need a new mouse and then uh, played some Warzone as well. Just checking it out, trying to get that first win. I'm not great, but I try. I do try. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Giving it your best <laughs> shot. Um, I tried to even play a solo game and it is, you just have to camp it out. Just wait, camp it out, catch people on rotations. It's kind of a, I spent so much time on my phone in my solo game. I didn't even feel like I was playing Warzone. So. I can't. I cannot play a BR solo. I cannot play a BR solo. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. I just can't. So. I just can't do it. Uh, Colonel Flom says, "Go pack, go." By the way, enjoy the North this one and only time. Winky face. You know, mm. won't even. I, Will knows my thoughts on the Vikings this year. Will knows my thoughts. We were never an eight and one team, but we are. We never were. We were put in our place last week, <laughs> over the weekend. Fox too quick playing Snap while waiting. Uh, possibly. It's to say, yeah, isn't everybody playing Marvel we, Snap? There's a whole channel in our Discord now for it. Love you too, Colonel. Don't even worry about it, man. Don't even worry about it. Um. Carnage says, well, I totally feel you on the solo queue of always playing alone. It's garbage. Wait 15 minutes to find a match, then get teammates with no thumbs. It happens. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just tough on the solo queue, too, because people often don't have mics. There's yeah. no communication or coordination. You just have to try to play off of each other and predict what people are going to do. Sherp Productions. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. Peanut says, I, I envy anyone that isn't a Steelers fan with me this season. <laughs> yeah, you guys are having it pretty rough, too. This will be, fir- this will be his uh, first, this will be Mike Tomlin's first under 500 season ever. I think so. Yeah, if they true. finish under 500, obviously. But things are trending that way. So, sorry. 
Snag, you're bumping. All right. Uh, I played Halo Infinite mainly for the community play date. It was a great fucking time. Um, I played God of War Ragnarok, still plugging away at that. Great fucking time. And then I also played Warzone for the first, well, Warzone 2.0. Warzone 2.0 for the first time. Um, and yeah, I continually got my shit rocked too. There was one game I had some kills and that felt cool, but uh, I got my shit rocked pretty, pretty easily. So. Beth says I gave in and downloaded it yesterday, so thanks for that. Hey, Beth. It's the COD cycle, isn't it? It's the COD cycle. I'm not going to buy that Wait, fucking horse shit game. Is she talking about COD or is she talking about Marvel Snap? Oh. Because Marvel Snap was in the chat right before. Oh. Beth. What? Beth. If play BR, I kind of want to play solo because it's so bad. I don't want to drag people down. <laughs> Think she's talking about Snap? I'm sorry, Beth. I thought you got COD. Either way. it's so. It, it, she's talking about Snap. Okay. That's good. Got it. Cool. It's a problem. Yeah, that's all I played. I played a few games. That was it. Um, Thanksgiving this week, so not a lot of games we can play. But we're still, in my, I believe we're still going to have a community play date on Friday. So if you're interested and you're not in the Discord already, join the Discord. I'll create an event for it. Um, but uh, Friday night, 8 p.m. Central to 10 p.m. Central, we're going to be playing some more customs. It's going to be a good time. Hope to see you there. Will, it's time for some shout outs. <laughs> I was scared that the button wasn't going to work again. You well, always I just, fucking scare me with that. I missed it. I hit right in between them. Oh, <laughs> the buttons are fucking huge. Yeah, you know what? I have a depth perception problem. So what? Oh, my God. <laughs> Lottie says, lads, I'm going to bounce and game a little. This is dope. Can't wait to catch more. Lottie, thank you so very much for tuning in, for, for the follow and everything. You are amazing. Uh, love everything that you do. Super excited to hopefully see you back on the desk for all the events moving forward within the HCS. Stay incredible. And, uh, just, yeah, stay incredible. That's that's all I got to say. Um, shout out to everyone who joined in that community played it from last week. We had Natana, Hero Spartan, Snagu, Elated Dartboard, Goalie Sniper, Deep Pancakes, Marmar, Carnage, Malamallow, The Amazing C4, Heavy Rainfall, Riznak, Just Josh, and Fox Too Quick. You guys doing so awesome for the Halo community? You are awesome, Sure Productions. Thank you so much. Holy hot damn. Holy hot damn. Shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. We have uh, Legend360, uh, Lottie, Fiendish, Zap Dane, Brett the Eskimo, Stress, Swag, Prime, and Sure Productions with the follows. Thank you all very much. And then we also had Carnig with the two month. Um, Carnage with the three month. And Swole Daddy with the sub. Thank you all so very much. You all get, woo! Um, happy belated birthday to Halo CE, Halo Infinite, Trooper, and MLG Queen. Um, happy birthday today. Today, if I can find it again, because of course I fucking missed it, to Ubernick. Happy birthday today to Ubernick. Turn 28. Congratulations to Benji on his engagement. Shout out to Corey, AKA legendary C4 for the epic HCS pro talk by Jeff Steitzer. Hit him again with it. Will HCS pro talk. Oh yeah. Daddy. And then, um, Will, I don't know if you noticed it, but I don't understand how you couldn't notice it when it's literally sitting right in front of your face. Yeah. Did you look at it yet? I did. I'm going to, I'm going to, Check it out. So shout out to Scott, a.k.a. Peanut Mutt, and Alex, his wife, for the custom HCS ProTac Elite Series 2 controller. Damn. So, uh, Peanut, you're amazing. His name's Scott. Uh, so, for those who don't know, Scott and his wife, Alex, won not once, won not twice, but won trivia at Worlds three times. Damn. They won so much that the amount of money that they had in Design Lab gift cards was insane. So they were incredibly generous to design a custom HCS Pro Talk controller. It even has it even has HCS Pro Talk engraved on the bottom here. Um, just so fucking cool. You didn't have to do that, and that's amazing. And just cannot thank you enough. It's so awesome. Um. 
So thank you for that again. And then what will nothing. Okay. Community creations. Well, that's it for the shot. It's time for some community creations. We have halo memes every day, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash halo memes. Check them out. Mediocre moments by high tech redneck. Go check out those shorts on YouTube. The best rookie season of all time. Halo infinite season one by HCS. And yes, it talks about bound and yes, they're not wrong. The most underrated Halo pros, Halo Infinite Season 1 by HCS. That video released recently, and it's very, very good. Um, and then I also combined another little bit of a list of Halo Infinite Forge creations that I have found or have seen been floating around on Twitter, and I wanted to include them in the show notes so you have easy access to links if you want them. First up, we have High Rise from Modern Warfare 2, the original. Okay, that's in Forge now, by Hollywood Forge. We have Crestfallen by the God of All Chairs 64. We have a map cryptic by Envor, pro player Envor for Team War. And he released an overview video, giving an overview of the entire map as well. Go ahead and check that out. We have Banished Narrows. That's right. It's Narrows, but in banished form. It's by uh, Legnarim. I'm going to mispronounce that, but I apologize. We have, yes, we have fucking Turf from Halo 2. It's by Northern Cor- Northern Condor. We have Ascension from Halo 2 by the Newt Goodler. We have Hang em High Definitive. It's the definitive version of Hang em High by Coop Dog. And we have the Star Wars Battlefront map Bespin Platforms by Star Wars HQ. All of the links are included in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show. Check them out if you're interested. They're there for easy access for you. Sure. Uh, production says, uh, dude, this is so cool. I can't believe I've never heard of you guys, but I play a lot of Halo. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that you're fucking here too. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. If you're, if you want to know something about us, Will gives me angry looks and I scream in a microphone. There you go. That's our show. Um, you should join the discord productions. It's a great time. It's a great time. And Snag, you're amazing. Don't ever forget that. Can I replace my end, uh, the show random off top question with your World Cup pick and why they will win? Sure. I know nothing about the World Cup, but sure. We can do that. Carnage with the gifted sub to the awesome one, 999. Thank you for the gifted sub. And get a woo! Hell yeah. All right. Love that. Love that. Okie dokie artichokey. That's all I got for the show. Will, if you wouldn't do, if you would, wouldn't, if you would do me a favor <laughs> and plug this motherfucker. And after you do, small daddy will get to your question. You can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HGS Pro Talk. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and others like Josh's favorite. Pocket cast. Not- hashtag not an ad. Just a really fucking cool app. Uh, leave us a review and let others know about the show. You can join our Discord, join the community discussion, exclamation point, Discord, and chat, or check out the link tree on our Twitter and find it there. Speaking of Twitter, we have one of those, twitter.com slash Talk. Will it be around? Who knows? We'll wait and see. So that's the thing, too. Uh, real quick, I want to cut you off just for a Go second for here. It. Because we don't know what the state of Twitter will be in the near, in the far future, whatever, um, yes, we, I did create, um, accounts on all of the things that are buzzing around right now. And that was a, I guess that could be used as a pun for hive, but, um, we do have an account on Mastodon. It's in our, uh, it's in our link tree on our Twitter bio. So if you want that, you can get that. We, I haven't posted anything anywhere yet. This is just for if Twitter does fucking take a nosedive. Okay. That's all. All right. All right. Okay. Um, so we made an account on Mastodon. We made an account on, um, Hive. We made an account on another one as well. I'm forgetting what it's called, but you can find us on there. Just search for HCS pro talk. We're on there again. Haven't posted anything. Won't do it until Twitter goes in the fucking dumpster. If it does go in the dumpster. Oh, it's too happy. Welcome to the live show. Thank you for the follow says, bro. They have had more people on last week than ever. I don't know what we're talking about specifically, but Twitter, okay. they, they had a surge in users. Oh, sure. Because... I bet they have, and that's fine. But like I said, I just, it just in case this is all a just in case scenario. What if, who knows? 
Well, go ahead. Continue. A um, couple other social media sites, Instagram and Facebook. If you want to check out VODs, anything that happened in the past, interview series, that's all over on YouTube, youtube.com slash HGS Pro Talk. And stay tuned for more on those. If you are, are listening to the podcast version and would like to catch us live, we are on Twitch, twitch.tv slash HGS Pro Talk, usually Mondays at 7 p.m. Central or Tuesdays if things are happening in our life and the internet goes out. That's right. We have our website, hgsproto.com, uh, merch in the top right corner. Go check the, all that out. And don't forget about the fine folks over at Podcast Evolved. Make sure to check out EvolvedHalo.com. Your home for Halo. They have great shows such as Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, Halo TV Plus, Book Club, Builds with Blocks, Halo Headlines, and the Gear One. Halo Gear Guide. Halo Gear ha- Guide. What the? Combined words. Halo Gear Guide. Maybe I should add that. Go check it out. The show notes, you know. They're great. And Productions, thank you so much for the kind words, man. Greatly appreciated. We try. We try. Never seen Halo Podcast before? You should go check them out. Go check them out. This is the only one. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Greatly appreciated. Hell yeah. The people may be real, but the logo isn't. (laughs) Every time. Um... Sweet. Dude. Sweet. What does mine say? Sweet. <laughs> oh, no. Don't get stuck in the loop. Fox says, check out Podcast Evolved 2. You absolutely should check out Podcast Evolved. You should go to EvolvedHalo.com. Your home for Halo. And I can say now, definitively, that uh, our website will soon redirect to that website uh, very shortly, as in the start of next month. Like, I'll let you guys know when that's actually done, but just know that that is going to happen. So super excited about that. And then also for the new folks here, I just want to say this again. I've teased it like every other fucking week, but I'm going to tease it again. Um, We've got big things planned for 2023. We got some big things planned for 2023. We still need to iron out some details, but it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for you all to see it and engage with it if you're interested. It's kind of a hint. Um, And then we also have some cool things planned. Two of them are still being worked on right now, but two of them should be solidified. We just need to get times down. But just stay tuned for December. It's going to be a fun time. Very, very excited. Very, very excited. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, That is going to do it for episode 262 of HCS Pro Talk. That was good. It's it's awesome. It's great. It is. It's fucking awesome. Hit me with a Maddie Rums. I just want one. Maddie Rums. Ooh. Daddy Rums. Oh. Again, that's it for episode 262. Uh, for those who are tuning in live, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for the follows, the subs, communicating and chat. If you're lurking, thank you as well. Either way, it's all greatly appreciated. We hope you guys had a fun time. Like Lottie asked earlier, yes, we are a weekly show. So if you want to be here, we are typically live every Monday, like Will mentioned, at 7 p.m. Central Time. But of course, if some shit gets in the way, it's on uh, Tuesdays or Wednesday, whatever. But we're weekly. There's that. Um, I already lost my train of fucking thought. If you're tuning into the VOD or the audio version of the show, thank you guys very much as well for doing so. Hope you enjoy as well. We'll be back next week to talk about, I'll fucking know. Who knows what the pros are going to complain about now, them whippersnappers. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time. You need to say mangly dangly that I would love that. Davy wavy. We need, we need, uh, Jeff to say, wait, Davy wavy and mangly dangly sizzle sticks. Yeah. He, yeah. He does need to say sizzle sticks as well. That's, that's what snack said. Oh, oh perfect. That. Perfect. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. Talk about God knows what, but you know, we'll be here and maybe you will too. We'll see you next week. Until then.